Welcome to the Eucharistic Celebration. We want to give a warm welcome to all our guests who are worshiping with us for the first time. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Lisa Kosh. Our interpreter today is Suzanne Barnard. Our Mass intentions, we pray for all benefactors, guardians of this community, and for their families. We also pray for the healing and recovery of all our parishioners experiencing pain and illness, especially those undergoing treatment for cancer and those recovering from major surgery. We also pay, pray for our parishioners or who are homebound. We pray for the intentions of those listed in our prayer list. We also pray for peace in Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, and the world. We pray for our souls in purgatory. We pray for an increase in attendance to our chapel and a renewed spirit of our service to those who enter our doors. We also pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Our theme today is Be Doers of the World. The readings for today's Mass are in the Heritage Missal, page 231. Our celebrant today is Father Robert Bouffier. Warm greetings to our friends watching this Mass online. We would like to invite you to join us in person every Sunday at 9.30. Please remember to share the Mass with your friends on Facebook. By doing so, we help spread the world and our ministry to persons who are deaf and disabled. We hope to see you soon. our mass for the song. Our entrance in this morning is in the Heritage Missile at number 477, Canticle of the Sun. 477. Sun, beautiful day for all of us. And we're all, we all have smiles on as we came in the door. It was lovely. So we come together once again in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It is true that uh, today the theme is uh, be doers of the word. The theme is also God has given us the law and that is our religion. It's our way of life. It's our way of worship. And so we turn to the Lord in confidence asking for pardon for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the light shining in the darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the word that shatters the silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Almighty. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us together to everlasting life. so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, here are the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your Father, is giving you. And your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I join upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully. For thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as the whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. The, 
Oh, okay. I just thought of sorry, I was off. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. The no one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. second reading today is a, let, is a reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He will to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted into you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the word. The world of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees and some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the traditions of elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him. Why do your disciples, 
not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands. He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing enters one from outside. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel reading sounds very much like my mother when I was a little boy and had two young sisters only a year apiece younger than me, you know? She would say, why do you eat with unclean hands, right? Go wash your hands before you come to the table. And the other things that are even listed in this Gospel, right? They have all sorts of things that they need to do, like make their beds. That's mom again. She would tell us to do all those things, and after a while, they become second nature. We hope, right? We hope. But uh, I wash my hands before eating without even thinking about it. I make my bed in the morning before I do anything else when I get up. It's, uh, those are things that, do, that are the traditions of my elders, you know? And I don't think Jesus would complain about any of them. I think what he's telling us is get your priorities straight. What is more important than washing your hands or making your beds? There's a lot that's more important. More important than washing your hands before meals and making your bed or cleaning the dishes, another of our chores a little later on in life. More important than that is respect your mother and father. Honor them, says the commandment. And even if you don't quite understand what they're telling you about traditions, you honor them and you do them. You do them to honor them, not because there's something that are absolutely, rigidly proscribed for everyone. That's what Jesus says. When Jesus makes his list at the end of this gospel passage, these things that he says defile us, come from our hearts and out. Those are the things that we have to worry about. Clean those things up. Wash away those stains. And then you will be closer to what James is talking about in the second reading, religion. There's very few times that that word shows up in the Bible. It certainly shows up more in our speech almost daily than anywhere else in the Bible. Religion. And what is that word, religion? Religion comes from a Latin word, ligare, I know we all know what a ligature is. Anyone who's had surgery knows what a ligature is. It's binding together. And ligare is to bind. To bind. 
and it's to bind us to God. What binds us to God? We are bound to God by the law, or as James says, the word of truth that lives in you. And it's not only ligare, so we're not only talking about religion, we're talking about religion. And you know that in Latin, the re is always again, a repeat, do it again. So religion is about binding ourselves to God over and over and over again. It is a question of learning the discipline of listening to that word of truth, but not only listening, doing it. That's what James tells us. Do not just be listeners of the word, who rejoice in it, celebrate it, who think that God chose us to hear that word. That's how wonderful. But don't be listeners only, be doers of the word. That's true religion. And what do what does James say is the most important part of doing? He says, take care of widows and orphans. That's what he says. Now, that might not mean very much to us today, but in the time of James, widows and orphans had no one who were legally bound to take care of them. No one had to take care of them. A wife was taken care of by her husband. Children are taken care of by their parents, and they have to do that. Widows and orphans are at the mercy of anyone who walks by. They have no protection that they can count on. So James is saying, if you're going to do the word of truth, you must do what God does, and that is care for those who have no one to protect them. Care for those who need help, need your help. And do that as a discipline, as time after time after time, so that after a while it becomes again second nature. Why do I make my bed every morning? No one goes into my room. It's not a, a direct rule of life for Marianists or any other brothers and fathers, but we don't go into one another's rooms. So nobody would ever see if my bed is made or not made. But God sees. So I do it as a discipline. Every morning I do it. And these every morning things or every afternoon things or every evening things should include prayer. We must discipline ourselves to not only listen to the word of God, but to do it to follow Jesus now clearly as our master and our Lord and our rabbi, our teacher. Jesus shows us what to do. So many times people ask me, what's the point of praying for someone? What is the point of praying for another person? I mean, God is gonna do what God is gonna do anyway, isn't he? So why should we be praying? And the only answer I have for that is Jesus prayed. That's all, that's my answer. I can't answer that logically or theologically. It is Jesus who told us to intercede for one another. And Jesus told us that that is effective. You remember the story of the widow who came to judge at all hours of the night? Help me, give me, give me justice. And the friend who went to his other friend Give me bread. It's the middle of the night, I know, but give me bread. And they gave them because of the persistence, because of the steady prayer and intercession. That's the important thing. Do you know, this week we celebrated Mani, the mother of Gus. I don't know if you know that. Gus was a terrible guy who... Uh, was very bad, who, who would, not, would not follow his religion at all. Matter of fact, went to all sorts of other religions. He was ethically very, very bad. He had an illegitimate son with a woman that uh, he was not married to. And uh, Mani, his mother, 
prayed for him every day with tears, prayed and prayed every night. And that Gus became Saint Augustine, doctor of the church, a brilliant defender of the faith when he converted to Christianity and became eventually the bishop of the local area. And he attributed it all to his mother, Saint Monica, who I have called the first canonized helicopter mom. <laughs> she was always after him, always trying to get him, not by scolding, not by anger, but by love, constant. And that love and that prayer that she constantly did affected her son to convert and become one of our most important doctors of the church, theologians of the church. It's very, very amazing. I've told you stories about my sister Susan, who's one year younger than I am. Uh, uh, my sister Susan is sick. I, I mentioned that to you, that she has, uh, she was now diagnosed and got uh, the diagnosis is she has autoimmune hepatitis, the beginnings of cirrhosis, and she still has to go for further diagnoses to see if that's a result of cancer. They can't tell yet because of the inflammation of the liver. They have to wait for the liver to be to go down to its proper size with prednisone so they can then see if there's any cancer in there. Right? I told you that story. I asked for your prayers, and we're still, we're still praying for her all the time about that. But while I was talking to her, just a couple of days ago on the phone, um, she told me that Andy, which was a Vietnam War vet that she knew before he went to Vietnam and right when he came back from Vietnam, my sister and Andy were very close. All the family thought for sure they were gonna get married. But Andy was a non-believer from the stuff that he suffered in Vietnam. He refused to believe and make any type of accommodation. He couldn't believe God would ever let anybody do those things to one another. He was completely against religion. But Susan, another Mani, she prayed and prayed and prayed. She never let a day go by that she didn't pray for Andy, whom she did not marry. She ended the relationship because not go anywhere. She ended it after five years. I mean, that was a long time. And uh, she just told me on the phone, she said, you know, you, you, you can never give up, Bob. You can never give up. She said, really? Because Andy, who has a lot of medical problems himself, called her and said, Susan, you know, you were right. And he's returning to the so that's, that kind of thing is just in that area. It's a, it's a wonderful story about the persistence of prayer, about disciplining ourselves to over and over and over again be doers of the word and not hearers only, as St. James said. St. Francis said, I've told you this before, preach always. Preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. You get that? I mean, that's so powerful. It's not your, your mouth that convinces anyone. It's your doing, it's your being that convinces people that God is present in our world and active in our world, that Jesus is the Lord, that Jesus can make you doers of good, carers of the widows and the orphans of today. So it's a, this is a wonderful thing. This is religion. That's another thing I say all the time, constantly, that you know when you get to heaven, you all know this, it comes from the mouth of Jesus, not mine. When you get to heaven, St. Peter is not going to hand you a series of questions about, do you believe in God? Do you believe in the Catholic Church? Do you believe, and you check them off, and if you get over 75, 
you can come into heaven. That's not going to happen. Jesus says what's going to happen is, did you see me hungry and feed me? Did you see me thirsty and give me to drink? Did you see me naked and clothe me? Did you see me a stranger, a foreigner, and welcome me? And on and on and on. Actually, Jesus is saying, again, do the word of truth that you pretend or not even pretend. Do the word of truth that you hold dear, but don't just listen to it. Do it. Let's stand now and profess our faith. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it together with all Christians. And we now turn to God and present our petitions and ask the community's intercession. That the church grow in unity and remember Christ's call to love and serve one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. That lawgivers ensure just laws and equitable taxes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unemployed, the underemployed, and the overwork all receive living wages for honest work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the farmers and ranchers who feed the world reap a bountiful harvest and share it with the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather at this table actively participate in celebrating Christ's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For we, the particular intentions that we bring to this Eucharist and remember now silently. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our benefactors, guardians of this community, and for their families. We also pray for the healing and recovery for all parishioners experiencing pain and illness, especially those undergoing the treatment for cancer and all those recovering from major surgery. We also pray for our parishioners who are homebound. We pray for their intentions of those listed in our prayer list. We also pray for peace in Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza, and the world. We pray for the souls in purgatory. We pray for an increase in attendance to our chapel and a renewed spirit of service to those who enter our doors. We also pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Creator God, the universe is the work of your hands. Inspired by your spirit, we ask for your bounty in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our joy to be found in Heritage Missile is number 428. Only in this I want, 428.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Father Almighty. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. Jude and the other blessed apostles, and with all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. peace in our hearts, in our homes, and in our world. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all that would harm us, as we await with blessed hope the coming in glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of that peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for announcements. Warm greetings to our friends watching this Mass online. We would like to invite you to join us in person every Sunday at 9.30 here in Cooper City, Florida. Please remember to share this Mass with your friends on Facebook. By doing so, you help spread the word about our ministry to persons who are deaf or disabled. We hope to see you soon. Registration for Faith Formation is now open. Classes will start the second Sunday in September. Due to this holiday weekend, there will be no coffee after Mass today. Our coffee house will resume Sunday, September 8th. Thank you. Save the date. Our 5K run, walk, and roll will take place on Saturday, October 19th. Registration is now online. Please visit our website to register. August is the last month to get the discount. Early bird registration is $25. Regular registration is $30. Liturgical ministers, please get your copy of the calendar for next month in the lobby of our chapel. We'd like to sing happy birthday to all our members who are celebrating a birthday this week at home or here at church. If anybody's having a birthday, raise your hand. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Join our mission to spread hope. Become a missionary for our chapel by praying for us, remembering us in your prayers at 3 p.m., during the great hour of mercy, inviting others, bring a friend to Mass, faith formation, or one of our events, sharing the word, distribute our flower, flyer to those interested in learning more or post it in a local community board. Together, we can build a strong and more vibrant community of faith. Your St. Jude Chapel at Shock Communities in great need of your financial contribution. You can now send your weekly offering through the link posted in our official Facebook page or scan our QR code in the Sunday Bulletin, which is posted online. We thank those and love and your generosity made possible that we can continue to open our doors to our minister and to all our disabled brothers and sisters. We wish everyone a blessed and safe rest of the week. And please remember to take home a copy of the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in peace to love the Lord and his people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We are closing with the Sports and Heritage Missile number 529. Sing God 529. Thank you.